The history of Melrose Abbey began in the mid-600s, when St Aidan of Lindisfarne established a monastery at what was then known as Melross, now Old Melrose, in the Kingdom of Northumbria. Aidan, an Irish monk, brought monks from Columbus Abbey at Iona, with his first abbot, Yeta, being a Saxon. He was one of twelve taught by Aidan. However, the monastery's most famous monk was St Cuthbert, who entered it in 651, on the night St Aidan died. He took over from Boisil, the first prior at Melross, and went on to become prior of Lindisfarne in 664. St Boswell's, a nearby village, was named after this first prior. This original abbey was destroyed by the Scots who fought the Northumbrians two centuries later to gain control of the area, but it remained a place of pilgrimage. David I created many monasteries and churches the length and breadth of Scotland. At Melrose, he invited Cistercian monks from a Yorkshire abbey to set up an abbey at Old Melrose in 1136, but they instead chose what we know as Melrose, as the site which was known then as Little Fordal. This was the first Cistercian church in Scotland. David gifted the abbey large sums of money and land, and over time it gained property and land in Ayrshire, Berwick and Edinburgh. The abbey also gained fishing rights and became one of the wealthiest in the country. Thirteen monks arrived initially and built the abbey in accordance with their Cistercian rule, building the east end of the church first. In 1146, although the work was not complete, there was enough of it to hold a dedication service. It would be another 50 years before work was complete. The first abbot at this new Melrose Abbey was Richard. The second was David's stepson, Walthof, who is said to have performed miracles. He had been an Augustinian monk, rising up the ranks quickly, but turned to the Cistercian order in later life, entering as a monk. Following his death, his tomb was opened in 1171, where his body was intact. Thirty-five years later, a mason was busy working on a new tomb when he looked inside the tomb and found the body had not decomposed. In 1240, some of his small bones were removed as relics for pilgrims and used to cure people. Fragments of his shrine were discovered and preserved. In 1296, the peace enjoyed at Melrose was shattered when Edward I, or Edward Longshanks as he was known, invaded Scotland. However, Abbot Patrick swore fealty to Edward and the abbey was let by the monks to store surplus grain from the English army's supply base at Berwick. In 1306, Robert Bruce declared himself King of Scotland and the relationship between Scotland and England deteriorated. Bruce recaptured Roxburgh Castle near Kelso and won control of Teviotdale by 1314, the year of the Battle of Bannockburn, where he won a decisive victory over Edward II's army. Two years later, Bruce based himself at Melrose and launched attacks from there against the English-held lands. In retribution, Edward II sacked the abbey 
Bruce donated £2,000 to help rebuild it, a large sum of money at the time. Following his death in 1329, his heart was taken on a pilgrimage to the Holy Lands by his friend, Sir James Douglas. Douglas died in 1331 and Bruce's heart was returned to Melrose, where it was buried. His body was interred at Dunfermline Abbey, although today there is speculation that beneath Bruce's tomb are in fact the bones of David I. David II returned to Scotland in 1357 following a long imprisonment in England and peace was restored in the borders until 1385 when the Scots invaded England once more. The English retaliated and destroyed the eastern side of the borders. They burned churches and monasteries including Melrose, Dryborough and Newbattle. But as the monks watched their houses burned, they made plans to rebuild them and over the next hundred years did exactly that, building more ornate monasteries, the ruins of which we see today. Finance for the rebuilding of Melrose came from custom exemptions on wool exports granted by both the Scottish and English crowns, with Robert II granting it in 1386 and Richard II in 1389. Richard repealed this the following year when the monks tried to export 200 sacks more than his generous terms. The building work went on until the 16th century. James IV visited the site in 1502 and again in 1504 when he handed out drink silver to the Masons. It is thought the Abbey was never fully completed, but even so, it was a majestic building and usable. In 1534, a big change took place. The abbots of Cooperangus and Glenluce ordered the cessation of the strict Cistercian rule with the monks at Melrose no longer allowed to keep private houses or gardens. Negotiations began and the monks were allowed to keep their gardens, but all their produce was to be used both by them and the locals. A year later, James V appointed his five-year-old son, James, as commendator of Melrose. It was the beginning of the end of the Abbey and its 22 remaining monks. James died in 1542 with his infant daughter Mary becoming Queen of Scotland. During the rough wooing of Mary by Henry VIII trying to force her marriage to his son Edward, Melrose was burned in 1544 and tombs desecrated. The following year, the Battle of Ancrum Moor took place, with the English commander Sir Ralph Evers being killed, then buried in the abbey, which he had sacked the previous year. The abbey was then left to fall into disrepair, especially as the Protestant Reformation took hold. In 1559, Catholic worship was abolished in Scotland. The remaining monks lived out the rest of their lives at the Abbey, the last one, John Watson, dying around 1590. Twenty years later, the monks' choir was converted to a church. James Douglas, the last commendator, built the nearby commendator's house but later resigned, and the lands were sold off in 1608. The lands at Melrose passed to the Earls of Haddington, then later were bought by Anne Scott, Duchess of Buccleuch, the widow of James Scott, the first Duke of Monmouth, who had been executed for treason in 1685. 
A new parish church was built in 1810, and so ended worship at Melrose Abbey. The ruins of the abbey became part of the movement known as Romantic Scotland and became a fashionable place to visit. Robert Burns, the poet, visited in 1789 and described it as a glorious ruin. As its fame grew, Henry Scott, the third Duke of Buccleuch, agreed to pay for its conservation once a new church had been built. Sir Walter Scott is thought to have based his baronial home, Abbotsford, on the Abbey, and so named it after the monks who had used the nearby river crossing over the River Tweed. He also referred to it in many of his novels and poems, bringing in early tourists to the area. The artist J.M. Turner also helped influx, thanks to his work included in Scott's Lay of the Last Minstrel. Following Scott's death in 1832, inspiration for his monument in Edinburgh was also taken from Melrose Abbey. According to legend, among those buried in the abbey is the wizard Michael Scott, who lived from 1175 until 1235. He was tutor to Emperor Frederick II and court physician and astrologer at Palermo in Sicily, but returned to Scotland in 1230, where he died five years later. In 1919, the Abbey was taken into state care. It was Category A listed in March 1971, but this was removed in August 2017.